Hello from Tokyo! Today I'm going to use a circular or round canvas, 30 centimeters, and I'm going to use this sort of color scheme. I'm mainly focused on the gold. Uh, can you see that one there? Gold with a bit of white, rather than having too much pink. But those are the two colors I'm going to use today, the gold and the pink. And basically I've used the white from the big cup there, the base paint, with those colors I just showed you added, which was uh, carmine and naphthol red medium. And I'm gonna add a little bit more white because I think it's a little bit too pink still. That's Amsterdam titanium white. So we're gonna mix this up, but I find that it's a little bit too thick for my liking, this consistency. So I'm going to mix it with my pouring medium, which is 60% clear PVA glue, 30% water, and 10% US Floetrol. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to mix that up. So see, it's a little bit thinner now. Um, and then for the base paint, you can see how super thin that is. That's 70% clear PVA glue, 30% water as my pouring medium, and the light gold is the same as the pink. My balloon is still going strong. I've done a few paintings with this so far, so I'll be using that. And I still have the uh, water balloon. I might use it a bit, but you always have to make sure it's not split because sometimes there's a tiny hole in them if you've used them, you know, kept them for a couple of days. So let's start by laying down the base paint. After torching, I'm popping all the bubbles and picking out any lumps in the paint because I seem to have some this time. Even if I did filter it the day before, I probably should have filtered it on the day of painting. Um, I usually use stockings for that. But here we go. We are going to lay down all the colors all at once today and then um, add as I go along. So I've done the gold. Now I'm doing the light pink sporadically. Um, and then we will blow this out. Okay, it's now time to blow out the paint and <laughs> look at what happened there. That's a first. I think I was trying to make sure you could see because I'm, you know, when I'm blowing onto the paint from the top like this, it's hard for you to see. So I was trying to be conscious of where the camera was, but that failed. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm sorry if you just see my head. Um, I try to edit out um, a lot of this, but um, yes, I'm blowing directly from above straight on. And that helps the, especially the gold paint um, to create some lacing. Torching out some more of the bubbles, and then it's time to do our balloon smashes. So the first balloon smash, I wipe the paint off the balloon, but then the next few, I decide to keep the paint on and just keep on smashing. But this is great if you want to have that kind of variegated, blended petal, but I didn't want that in this case so I don't know what came over me um, and why I did this so you'll see from after this I will add more gold and keep on going to try and uh, separate a bit of the pink and the gold um, so yes I hope you enjoyed the video today and I will come back to you a bit later when we are fixing the middles because I'm going to go a little bit more close up so you can see how I'm going to do it for this particular floral painting.
For today's florals, I'm applying some of the light gold into the centers with a dotting tool. You can totally do that with a toothpick too. And then I'm splitting those dots with a toothpick and bringing them to the center. So I'll be doing the same with the next one, you'll see. And in this one that I just did, I didn't use the other end of the toothpick to um, center it at the end, but you'll see it with this one. Let's watch it together. So I am splitting it like that, and then another one, and then another one. <laughs> and then you see me turn the toothpick over and putting it in the middle and pulling upwards and that kind of centers it. Let's have a look at the wet finished version of the painting. It's always harder to see when it's still kind of lumpy, isn't it? But aren't they pretty? See what I mean where I really wanted like pronounced bits of gold. I didn't want it to over blend. So that's worked out because I added some more, but it's a really lovely pink as well. It's closer to the pink Sakura that we get in end of March early April end of March I guess more like um, right now we're having all the darker pink ones uh, they're almost finished actually everything is so fast now um, because of you know global warming and all that but yeah these are pretty so we will see them when they're dry here is the dried finished version of the painting let's go in for a closer look There's a lot of gold, which I wanted. In this lighting, it looks a little bit like sepia, which is quite nice, a kind of brownish color, but it is actually quite full on gold. I'll show you in a different angle or a different light in a moment. You can see how the middles turned out where it was split with a toothpick. You know, the paint was split and it looks good i love that one on the right there i had some stuff in the paint some lumps that didn't come out which is up there but i think i want to try and sand that off now what do you think if i had continued the florals all the way around the canvas although i like it actually as it is i kind of like it also at this angle here or in this position I'm not so sure from this orientation, but I quite like it when I've flipped it this way. Looks nice like that. So let's have a look at the shine. You can see it a bit here, but I'm going to take it across to where the window is and then you can see the shine better here. Look at how pretty it is. It's almost like an antique gold, but this is just Amsterdam brand light gold. I guess if you try Deco Arts 24 karat gold or some other brand, you might pop more. It might be shinier, but I think it works fine just using Amsterdam. I do love that brand. I hope you enjoyed the painting today and we'll give this color scheme a go too, especially as it's spring. Thank you so much for watching as always and see you in the next one. Bye!